Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Now it is time to learn the minimal, bare bones of redstone. This is how you find it, how you power it, what the basic functions are, and where you can place it to make sure that your redstone machines work. Let me uh, jump in and help you out. Ah! Oh my gosh! I'm I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a redstone cage of cage of emotion. Okay. Um, so uh, this is redstone, and you'll find it uh, inside of caves. Uh, when you break redstone ore, you get redstone dust, which is all of this fancy stuff right here. Um, so a redstone ore can be uh, placed on the ground. When you place it on the ground, it kind of looks like a dollop of, of blood or something gross. Um, and then when you put one uh, next to it, it will create a line like this. Now if you want it to bend, you put down another one and it will bend just like this. Uh, punching it once will uh, go ahead and bring it up off the ground. I'm in creative mode, so it's just destroying the redstone, but you would get an entity back if you were in your survival game. Redstone has two states, powered and unpowered. So here it is powered. Uh, here's unpowered. Of course, it's darker in color. Uh, when powered, it also emits these particles. So yeah, you can kind of tell from far away uh, where a, a redstone uh, line ends. And uh, it does. It, it'll end. Uh, it does end. And so here at um, the 15 block mark is where the current stops and you can see that all of this redstone is just not powered. Um, so that can be a problem for a lot of users. And uh, now if, if you may have heard that redstone lasts 16 blocks and if you are some sort of rain man you can tell that this actually ends at the 15th block. Uh, the 16 block uh, mark comes in in that you can, you can actually power an item here on the 16th block. So if I grab this redstone lamp and place it down, it will be powered. Uh, and so, you know, that's a powered uh, redstone lamp. If it's unpowered, it sort of looks like that. So just to, just to let you know. Now, you may say, well, if I can only get, you know, 15 blocks away from the source of my redstone signal, well, that's kind of a bummer. Well, there's an in-game mechanic to fix that. It is called the repeater. If you throw down a repeater, it will uh, restart the redstone signal, and so you can get much longer length. So now we have a redstone line, which will reach all the way over here. We're going to get a little bit more into the repeater a little bit later, and it has a few extra functions. But just know that you can repeat your redstone signal with a repeater. I'm not going to get into crafting recipes of any of these blocks. This is more of a tutorial on theory of redstone, not actually a walkthrough on how to create any redstone creation. So uh, let's move on. These are things in game that will create a redstone current. So. First off, the most basic is a redstone torch. It's always on, un unless if, well, we're going to get to the ways that this redstone torch would be powered off uh, a little bit later. But uh, for now, let's just say that it constantly uh, sends out a redstone signal, and it's powering these redstone lamps right here. By the way, a fun drinking game is, is to drink um, every single time I say redstone uh, in this episode. So uh, that is just the most basic, is a redstone torch. Next is a lever. A lever is a very easy item to create, and it can toggle on and off the current. So uh, if you just want to leave it on or, or leave it off, you can do either of those. Next is the button, and the button sends a second pulse of redstone. Uh, around 20 ticks long, uh, uh, it will just send that current down and then turn itself off. Around in the same vein of that is a pressure plate. A pressure plate does just about the same thing as a button, but with your feet instead of actually punching the button. Uh, there are different types of buttons and pressure plates and even analog pressure plates, which we will get into later. Next is some uh, trip wire. Uh, works just like the button and the pressure plate, except it is a trip wire uh, causing the uh, start of the redstone signal instead of the uh, other devices. And finally is a redstone block. 
This it works very much like the torch, except it really can't be turned off, uh, and it can be moved with pistons, which is useful in creating compact designs. Uh, so just remember the redstone block. Now, one of the hardest things that was uh, that I found uh, when starting off with redstone is where does the redstone current come from? Um, so I have sort of a scenario here to sort of, sort of show it off, where a redstone current will be uh, pulled from. So uh, first, uh, this is a source block, this, this red wool. And so when I place an item on the source block, it's going to go ahead and power. And I'm, I'm powering this with this lever, so you can see on and, and off state. Now, the areas, now how, how redstone power works is there's sort of a source block. So this is a source block because the lever is powering it. And then there's almost like a fall off block or a residual power block. So this one is getting the residual power from the source block. And if we go out a block further, actually here, let me turn that one off just to show. Uh, if we go a block further, it's not going to be powered. So the areas that this uh, source block will send residual power is in this configuration of above, below, behind, uh, and to the side. Now, it does not send it diagonally, so you won't get any uh, power diagonally, and you won't get any uh, two blocks out. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now, this was also, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sort of jump ahead to a little bit extra, is that um, this right here, this, this lever, this is also a redstone source block. I couldn't make it wool because it still needs to be a lever, but that means that over here on the sides of the lever, uh, and the front of the lever, whoops, uh, of course that won't work, on the front of the lever is also where you can get redstone power, and, and nowhere else uh, will the redstone come from. And so this allows you to do things like this, where you put a redstone line in front or uh, just right below the lever, and it will power it. A thing to note is that this redstone line is actually here, just this redstone right here is actually taking up a full block location. So if I wanted to put a redstone lamp in here, I can't because this redstone, even though it doesn't look like it, it's taking up the space of this full block. And that is why um, it's, it's being powered, is because this whole block right here is being powered by the residual power of the source block. Now, moving on, I have sort of another little contraption, and this is for a redstone line. So let's say you were uh, transporting redstone down a line. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And while it's moving across blocks, you will get power from the side of the block below the line, the block below that block, and on the other side. Now, you may think, haha, I'm very smart. I bet if I put a block right here, it'll also be powered. Well, no. No, it won't be powered. So just keep that in mind that it will power the block below it and residual power will come out through the sides and bottoms, but uh, you won't get any um, residual power on top of the line. Also, this redstone line ends inside of this block. When a redstone line travels and then it points at the end of this block, it will actually power that block. Now just to show off, oops, if this redstone line was to travel this way, uh, it wouldn't actually be powering the block because there is no connection there. And, and I'll show that off uh, once I finish uh, showing off all of the places that you can get redstone from this source block, just like uh, the other blocks over there. Now, if, you, if this redstone line was to go by the block instead of actually ending directly into it, it actually wouldn't power any of those redstone devices. So just keep that in mind. Now, let me show off a behavior of redstone that lies at the heart of most of the redstone machines or logic gates in game. And that is the behavior that when you have a redstone line that goes into a block and there is a torch on that block, uh, if the line is powered, the torch will turn off. Or in other words, if there is a torch on a block, and that block gets powered, the torch will turn off. And just to show this off, uh, we have uh, the power torch, which is powering the redstone lamp. So you can tell when the torch turns on and off by when the lamp turns on and off. And so if we flip this, the torch will turn off. Even though there's power on this side, it hits this block, it powers this block, and then it turns off the redstone um, torch. 
This may not seem like all that amazing of a behavior, but it allows you to create sort of binary functions in the redstone. So a good way to start thinking about redstone is true or false or on or off or in binary, uh, one or zero. So if it's on, uh, it would be true or one. And if it's off, it would be false or zero. So um, keep that in mind as we move forward that there's a whole bunch of different ways to think about redstone and that uh, this torch behavior lies at the heart of a lot of the redstone mechanics moving forward. I also want to mention that there are some new blocks in game that use redstone a little bit differently, but not a whole lot, a lot differently than the previous versions. Uh, this is pretty much a digital signal where uh, when you turn something on, it turns on. These are what I like to call the analog blocks. Um, it still sends out a signal. Um, we're going to get into analog blocks uh, a little bit later on in the course, but I'm just letting you know that I'm not covering them right now, but they do exist and we will be covering them later in the course. Now. We've learned uh, how to create a redstone signal, but what does this stuff do? Why would I ever use it? What, what po possible contraption could I ever come up with? Well, here are some of the things that will take a redstone signal. First off is doors. Uh, doors will open and close. Same thing with fence gates. They will open and close. This is one of my favorites. Uh, the, a rail will change direction based off of if it is powered or not powered. So you can send people one direction or another direction based off of redstone logic. You've seen it before because we've been showing it off a lot, these redstone lamps. I like showing them off because it's off, there's an obvious on and off state um, uh, between these lamps, so redstone lamps can take it. Note blocks will be powered uh, with redstone power. And so you could create musical symphonies. Uh, dispensers and droppers, both are redstone activated. Uh, sticky pistons and normal pistons are redstone activated. Uh, these, uh, this is a powered rail which will uh, park a cart on it so that it won't roll down and then it will send a cart uh, a little bit faster if it is powered. And of course redstone components are powered by redstone, so this repeater is powered by redstone. And then of course TNT can be activated. Oh wait, uh, okay, whoa, 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 oh, that's no fun. Uh, so, now that you have got the basic understanding of redstone, in the next video we're going to be getting into timing and making sure that all of your uh, devices work together with the internal clock of Minecraft called ticks. So see you then.